So for the example, <clears throat> I picked uh, one out of this book, uh, Collins. Um, it's a pretty darn good book. Um, I just have it right here. Uh, there you go. This is Collins' Mechanical Design of Machine Elements, a Failure Preventive uh, um, Perspective. And they have this lovely green uh, font inside of things. Um, so I picked this problem because the one that's in Shigley, or even the, the couple of, of problems that are in Shigley, are usually deal with mine shaft uh, things, um, whereas this has some others. By the way, there was that groove I was talking about, what they were uh, anticipating that you would have for the bearing pressure uh, when they were talking about the thing. So I just want to point that out. So here is um, here are the here's the problem. Uh, that I chose, and you'll notice that it's really similar to what we uh, what we what we're doing, right? 750 pounds, right here, and um, some of the conclusions that they make. I'm going to use Shigley numbers instead of uh, Collins numbers. They're slightly different. Um, some of the decisions that are made early on are going to be different for, from our application. Just so, just be aware. And uh, so some of their uh, priorities, but let's let's take a look at this. Is desired to market a small air-driven hoist in which the load is supported on a single line of wire rope and rated for three quarter, three eighths of a ton or through 750 pounds. The wire rope is to be wrapped around a seven-inch diameter drum. Already, their drum is a larger drum than the initial one we assumed uh, for part uh, one of the project. Um, the hoist uh, should be able to lift and lower the full rated load 16 times a day, 365 days a year for 20 years. That's a that's a that's a pretty ambitious thing, right? Um, um, so so maybe that's a, a location where we're going to have to be like make a different decision than them. That might be a little too much. All right, so they've already they decide to go with 637 improved plow steel rope. Uh, so they made that decision um, already. I'll point out to you that there are there's not a lot of data for um, some of these other uh, uh, types of ropes outside from what we we have here. It would really be nice if I could find a source um, under useful links and resources. I have put in um, or I will put in. I haven't put in yet. It's not there yet, so let me pause it and make sure that I put it in there. All right, so um, here's uh, what I put into the useful um, links and resources under wire rope. Um, I went ahead and I put that union wire rope handbook that I had shown uh, in the previous uh, uh, video. Um, I also have the wire rope user's manual. I'm not sure this is the actual uh, user's manual. I think. Um, this seems like a, too abbreviated to me. I think because th this is the one that they're referencing a lot of the things. And by the way, um, I didn't. I meant to talk more about the way that eyes are uh, created and uh, and slings and uh, that type of thing. But I can't tell you everything under the sun. Um, there is a good information in here, it appears, but there's not um, everything that you would want. Uh, but here you go. Uh, I think Haynes had more wires to choose from. This does have like a whole lot of information, like wire rope 101. So it's worth coming through and look at all these different patterns. Aren't they pretty? I think they're. I think I just think that's lovely. Look at that, all these different ones. Uh, but they they give you a bunch of different, uh, all kinds of different information. Here's that same choice uh, thing uh, that we had seen. So I want to make sure that I uh, bring this up in class when, when we uh, go to look at these things. Um, general purpose wire rope, um, things about it going into sheaves and about its damage. So you got all kinds of stuff. Um, but they do have like aircraft cable, which is uh, kind of like closer to what we're maybe looking for. I'm not sure we want the really big steel rope, but let's go ahead and continue on with the um, with this example. 
right here. I just wanted to point out that that 637 is pretty much we're dealing with that because that's what we have in the book, right? And, and that's what that Collins has in, in, in his book as well. So let's uh, proceed through um, this right here. And so some of these things are decisions that they made. Uh, right here. So first off, we want to decide what is our static um, rating going to be. So I'm going to go to uh, table 1725 and I'm going to use um, that this is a hoist. Therefore, my safety factor is 5. And I decided to call it ND because it's a safety factor design right there, right, for hoisting. Um, in the book here that they were that I'm using, they made the decision to go with 1.25 for fatigue. Right? That was just uh, um, that was just a choice that they made. Okay. Um, now, okay, so other things I'm going to need uh, from table uh, 1727 which it says useful properties useful properties for 1637 uh, we don't need the weight per foot if this was really long and it was hanging down we'd have to include the weight of the cable as well um, but we're, we're, we're going to have a short uh, run of cable. We don't really have to worry about that um, so much. Um, we do have minimum sheave diameter. So there's something we want to check. And here's a better sheave diameter, right, between these two uh, to pick. Uh, the diameter of the wires, we're going to need to know that. We're going to need to know um, the uh, area of the metal. Oh, and by the way, there's actually there's a different place uh, where we can get that same information. It's going to be a different number. That's always annoying, isn't it? Um, and then we're also going to have the ropes Young's modulus, which also has a different location for it. So uh, that we, we might want to have to, um, we might want to have to, we might have to uh, choose two different things, right? Here's the uh, 637 right in there. They have the same sheave diameter. Um, there's two different materials, right? Monitor steel and plow steel. Here's the out diameter of the outer wires. It's not going to be the same thing, I guess, as the diameter of all the wires. But we, we can double check to see if they're different. And here's elastic modulus is 11 instead of 12 uh, million um, PSI. So that's, that's sort of a thing uh, to look at. But we did get the from this table the um, metal area of 0 0.40 d squared. And by the way, that was different for Shigley uh, than for, for ours. Uh, we don't know the diameter of the rope yet. Okay, so that's where we're going to write. Um, we also do write, we get this ultimate um, by taking the lower of the wire uh, uh, um, thing right here, right? So, uh, we say that it's improved plow monitor uh, steel. That's what was given. So 240 uh, KSI uh, was our ultimate strength of the wire. I have to double check what my time is right here. Uh, okay, yeah. I have 25 minutes till class. Let's see if we can get this thing. Um, okay, so uh, I got that. So I can find out what my... Um, based on my stress right here, I could say F divided by AM right here is going to be equal to uh, 750 uh, divided by uh, 0 0.4 D squared. And sometimes I'll write DR squared because they act, they, that's what they did. I could take my ultimate strength and divide it by my design. And I put an SUT on accident right there, but I think it's fine. Uh, you get the idea. So I have 240E3 divided by my 5 right here. And from this, 
I can find what my diameter is. So here's the diameter of the rope to start with, just based on static alone. Shigley doesn't really do that in their examples. Um, based on static. Okay, so uh, now the process, uh, for whatever reason, decides to go and pick up the next uh, side. I, I want. I personally want to pick up the uh, the next size up. Um, personally, um, but if we were going to pick out a sheave just based on this, now I went ahead and picked up the next size up. So uh, next size up, or the next size that's available is 0.25 inches, right there, right. So. That's the one that we're going to go with. I mean, we could we could go ahead and uh, take a look at uh, other cables. Um, let's see, we have uh, from from a catalog right in here. If we could find, um, I'm just randomly looking at this point, but I'm not sure if I will find it right here, um, right off the top. Uh, metric conversion, general purpose. Here's their 637. Um, so let's see, and you'll see that we have quarter inch is like the smallest one that they have, right? And here's your improved plow steel. Here's your quarter inch uh, right in there. And um, uh, this is the nominal strength of t in tons, by the way. So we would have to multiply by 2,000 pounds. But anyway, we're going to stick with what we have in Shigley right here. So uh, from uh, table either one I think the of the two tables that we were looking at either table 1727 or table 1724 we'll find that the sheave diameter is going to be equal to 18 times uh, the wire rope diameter so I went ahead and used the 0.25 in the example in Collins they went ahead and used this first diameter that they got which seems kind of strange to me okay so they already have 4.5 is uh, so that's actually larger than the assumed one that we had I went ahead and used the smaller size when I was uh, looking at that first uh, 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 pass by the way um, so we might need to increase our diameter or maybe we want to stick with it because we, it's what we based our gear design on um, or maybe we could revisit that anyway um, so now we need to get some stuff so I've decided to use um, uh, did I let's see which one did I use uh, I used yeah table um, 1727 and I found for our rope we had 12 e6 uh, psi right so there was also we remember I found 11 from a million psi from 1724 but this is stiffer so I went ahead and used it um, and then I also found the diameter of the wire was going to be D oh, well, I'm, it's not DR it's just D D divided by uh, 22 right there right so that's what I decided to use so when I went to get the bending uh, uh, stiff the bending uh, stress I would say that it was gonna be the diameter of the wire divided by the diameter of the sheath times my ER if I look at that I get 0 0.25 divided by 22 divided by my four point I don't know I went ahead and used the actual one because we already got we already picked it out right somebody already picked it out for us uh, and then so we have 12 e6 right here and what we're left with is 19.48 KSI, which seems kind of reasonable in terms of our uh, our stress. And then um, I went uh, from figure 1721 right here. I want to use and find the number of cycles. With well, the number of cycles from what we were told here, 365 times 20 um, times 16 per day, right? So 365 days, 16 times a day for 20 years. 
we end up with 1.168 E5 cycles. So if we go to this uh, figure right here, that is, okay, these are millions of cycles. So that's going to be um, somewhere right in here, right? So I said, what, 1.16, let's say 1.2. Here's 1.5. Let's look up here. Here's our 637. And so the number that I went with was, uh, for this thing, was 3.5. I said it was 3.5. I decided it would be right there. I don't want to mark my book up permanently. So I went with um, P over SU was 3.5. I'm going to put my approximately. And that's over 1,000 right there, right? Because remember, there was 1,000 times our P over SU uh, type of thing. So um, now it says um, from equation 1744, um, as discussed before, we will find the fatigue strength, P over SU, SU, D of the rope, diameter of the sheave divided by 2. So I get... Um, 3.5 over 1,000, right? Well, you're gonna see that the 1,000 is because we had KSI right here, right? This bothers me that we had to play that game. But 0 0.2, whoop, um, 0.25, yeah, 0.25 is the diameter of the rope and diameter of the sheave is right here. And what we end up with is an we got a problem. We got 735 is the fatigue uh, um, uh, limit there. We have 750 pounds. So we already are not going to be able to make any safety factor uh, that we have with regard to that. Um, the Okay, so if we're going to follow what they say to do in Collins now, we're going to take 1741, equation 1741, and find what the bending, equivalent bending force is going to be, the equivalent bending load. And that is to take ER DW AM and divided by big D. All right. So that's our 12E6. Um, diameter of the wire, once again, that's 0 0.25 divided by 22. I could have calculated the number. Um, AM is 0.4 times my rope diameter squared. Right, that came from um, up here, right from the table 1727, and it's all divided by my seven. And what did I get right here? 487 pounds. Right here. Now. Um, if we're going to do the fatigue safety factor, is going to be 1745. The fatigue safety factor, NF. Um, and this is, uh, but we, we're not going to be able to achieve this. It's just not possible because already, already FU, or, uh, or let me, let me, excuse me, the fatigue safety factor, here you go. Already, FF is smaller than FT, so we're not going to be able to get it here. And even when we, we subtract out the bending from the fatigue, and, and that's what we're supposed to use for this fatigue safety factor. Um, so we're just not going to be possible when we put these values in here and we stick in 735 minus our 487 divided by our uh, FT, which was 750, right? That equals 0.33, and we get a we get a frowny face um, as part of that. So, well, what happens in the other book, right? To to when, when we do this 
is to try to set all of this up, but now uh, to put a uh, um, go backwards and leave out the wire diameter right here. So we have a D here, we have a D here, and we have a D right here, right? So there's a D built in there, a D built in there, there's a D built in right in there. And what you could have is you could have a cubic, right? A cubic equation because you have D, D cubed right here, but it's uh, not just taking the cube root of the th you know, thing. You, you also have to probably go to Wolfram Alpha. And I found that it was impossible uh, to achieve um, if you put in that 1.25. Um, I wrote the thing out this way right here. See, I put the frowny face right there. And there's 1.25. I multiplied it by my 750. I put all of those parameters in there and then I came up with something that the cube of this and you can't be done, right? It comes up with a negative number and, and two complementary imaginary numbers right there. So um, it's almost time for class. I'm going to try to uh, explain uh, what I needed to do in the continuing story. So this is only part one of the example uh, right in here of uh, what, what we would need to do. The other thing we could, I decided to do was like to try to figure out, um, estimate what the life would be if I used a quarter inch rope. Because I believe that the quarter inch rope is going to be uh, sufficient based on just the tensile stress uh, of the thing, even using a factor of five in there. Um, it's definitely, it's okay with the bending um, here. And by the way, this looks it's supposed to be a seven. Um, but uh, for fatigue, but remember that we based that thing on this right here, right? We, ba we based it on this life right here. Maybe that 20 years is just too much right here. Maybe we can pick something that's going to be uh, much lower, right? We could pick, you know, uh, um, uh, half uh, the number of bends right here. So we're going to move over. To, to this way, and we can see that we're going to go up significantly um, onto the thing. Um, so anyway, I have 10 minutes until class, so I can't finish uh, this video. But um, it's already 22 minutes long anyway. So we'll have the continuing story.